Uh, let's start in Leviticus chapter 10, verse 9. God is giving instructions to the priests. And we'll, we'll think about each of these along the way and then try to draw some conclusions before we're finished. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 9. Someone read that, please. When you enter the tent of meeting, that you may not die. It is a statute forever throughout your generations. So don't drink any alcohol when you go into the tent of meeting, into the tabernacle. Interesting. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 7. Now let's not let Hepzibah read all of them. Uh, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 7. Priests also stagger from wine and reel from beer. Priests and prophets stagger from beer and are befuddled with wine. They reel from beer. They stagger when seeing visions. They stumble when rendering decisions. Okay. Chapter 11 says, don't do it. Chapter 28 says, they are doing it. Numbers chapter 6, verse 3. So this is, again, talking about the priests, uh, that they've got to abstain. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 6. Okay, that context there. is talking about the people in the wilderness. If you look at verse 5, During the 40 years that I led you through the wilderness, your clothes did not wear out, nor did the sandals on your feet. And then you ate no bread, drank no wine. So during that 40 years, they were not doing normal farming. So they didn't have any grain for bread. They didn't have any grapes for wine. So that's not necessarily a prohibition, but it is stating a fact. Proverbs 31, verses 4 and 5. Because of the kingdom will meal to juggle wine, rulers should not praise alcohol. For if they drink, they may forget the law and not give justice to the oppressed. Mm. Mm. So now it's not merely priests, but it's kings. Proverbs 20, verse 1. Wine produces mockers. Liquor leads to brawling. Whoever is led astray by drink cannot be wise. Okay. Chap Isaiah 5, 11. And then verse 22 in that same chapter. Well, to those who are heroes and drink wine, but men whose power goes to get them strong drink. And Isaiah 56, 12. Some may say, let me get wine, let us fill ourselves with strong drink. And tomorrow will be like this day, great beyond measure. Eat, drink, and be merry. Micah 2 11. I was a prophet full of lies, and he said to you, 
I'll preach to you the joy of wine and drink. That's just the kind of prophet you would like. <laughs> Deuteronomy 14.26 Yes, that's talking about tithing. Uh, every three years you bring your tithes to Jerusalem and have a party. And it is saying, bring the wine, bring the strong drink, whatever you like. Have a good time. Proverbs 31, 6 and 7. Give beer to those who are perishing, wine to those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. Uh, I'm reading the Bible story here today in this Proverbs 23. He has nothing good to say about drinking or being drunk in Proverbs 23. So if anybody wants to read that, and then just talk about the third chapter. Let's take a look at it. Proverbs 23. Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who is complaining? Who has wound without cause? Who has readiness of heart? Those who near late over wine, those who keep trying each wine. Mm -hmm. Now, the fact is that they drank wine all the time. They didn't drink water because in most cases the water was polluted. Now, some people say, well, they always cut the wine with water, and you can get an argument about that. So, here are the facts of life. They drank wine all the time, and yet we see these kinds of statements. So, what should we say? What's the Bible's attitude toward alcohol? Charlie? Wine Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think we can say pretty clearly that the Bible is not teetotal. <laughs> and yet, at the same time, it is full of these kinds of warnings about this, quote, good thing. And you remember, of course, the famous uh, admonition from Paul, Timothy, take a little wine for your stomach. <laughs> you got stomach problems? Drink a little bit. And yet, there it is. So that in many ways, we in the evangelical branch of America have chosen teetotalism, and I'm teetotal and, and happy to be, largely because of the problem of excess that was so very common on the American frontier. It was, it was everywhere. The other thing that I perversely like to think about is the great accomplishment of feminism was prohibition. It is women. It is women who got rid of alcohol in the United States. Uh, Carrie Nation, 
but you don't hear the modern feminists talking about that at all. <laughs> but there it is. And so the challenge is, okay, how do we avoid the dangers of alcohol? And especially, uh, you probably picked it up through here, strong drink is distilled liquor. Uh, it's not wine or beer. It's distilled drinks. And the Bible is almost totally negative about strong drink. But there's the challenge. How shall we indeed avoid excess? And one great way is don't start. <laughs> uh, we, uh, sorry to offend these folks. Uh, <laughs> 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 and the other thought that I have always entertained alcoholism may well be a disease but there's one sure way never to get it Carol all of these scriptures and I have just come out of a study of James. I was just thinking the, the real issue here is not to do anything that damages the character of Christ in our life. Mm -hmm. I mean, James talks about speech and they don't, he never says don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> don't do scary language or gossip or corruption. Yes. And I think the same thing is that there was one couple that left our church because Martin wouldn't preach that wine was a sin. Uh huh. The effect of it. Yep. But that damages your character. Mm hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you vile and sensitive mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We did lose that couple because of the message I preached. And I'm going to keep both of them. But I would say that while drinking alcohol is sometimes okay, there is always a bunch of caution. Uh, there's good reason for not drinking alcohol. Yeah. In my case, I have a history in my family yes. of addiction to alcohol. Yes. And if I have a predisposition to become an alcoholic, I won't ever know. Yeah. Because I'm not taking a drink. Yep. Yeah. I made a church secretary angry one time because I said this wasn't said publicly, it was said in our conversation in the office, but she was talking about making people uh, happy and friendly when they come. And I said, well, I invite some happy, friendly people to start with. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I agree with Carol, because um, I've had alcoholism in my family. My uncles were that way. And growing up as a kid, I saw it. But then I also saw people who were able to drink and not not affected. And I wondered, as a kid, how come he could drink and not be the way my uncle was? And I and I look at the the different things in the Bible, and you know, again, it talks about the excesses of it being the real evil side. It's there, and they talk about growing vineyards, and you know, yeah. And uh, and like Carol said, you know, God doesn't tell us to talk; He just tells us to control it. <laughs> Same thing with wealth. You know, God's got nothing against having money, but there's the evil of yes. money itself. You know, yes. so it, yes. it's a cautionary thing. Yes. And uh, now, not many people get an over excess of money and then back in the car and run off the road. You know? <laughs> uh, like so there's yes. All this, there's a larger propensity of bad things to happen with excess of alcohol than there is of other things, I agree. Yes. Come in, come in. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's some seats. <laughs> welcome, welcome. One of our sons is a, was a paramedic and left when he was on fire department. 
one time he was at the house and I was asking him about the number of calls. He was telling us about the number of calls. Uh, and he would say, when I first called the in, he was at the corner of Maxwell and Broadway. I knew exactly who I was going to pick up. Oh. And uh, and he said we we picked it up sometimes three times a night. Oh. And um, and um, I, I said to Wyatt, how how many of the people? And he said, Mom, he said, if we didn't have to pick up, if we weren't treating alcoholics and drug addicts, and he and he talked about a time when they missed a call for a little girl who had eaten some of her father's Chinese and she had a peanut allergy. And he said we were the closest ambulance to her, but we couldn't leave the person we were with. Because we hadn't checked him into the hospital yet, and that little girl died. Mm. Uh, mm. And he just said, you know, there's, there's no way to estimate the cost in, in lessons than alone. Yes, 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 yes. Right stage, uh, recently they sold uh, liquor. And they are kind of, uh, I mean, there is a kind of government directed way of selling liquor. Yes. And then people sell it illegally, which is good. And they added more methanol. And 47 people died. Mm. This week. This week. This. Two, three days before. In, in a single village, 47 people died. From methanol laced alcohol. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I, Karen was reading yesterday that there are more barrels of bourbon in Kentucky than there are people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank God for basketball, yes. Uh, now, let me ask you before we leave this, why do you think it was so specifically prohibited from the priests? David? Yes, for the thing is, they're in the with the spirit of God, not the spirits. And the thing is that the, the I saw all the emphases were really on people in leadership, was very strong. And the thing is, alcohol does alter your judgment. We know it in driving. We know it in, in other things, in homes. Uh, a drunken father wanders into his daughter's bedroom and it creates a bunch of legal problems that have nothing to do with perversion or anything like that. But the list is horrific of what happens mm. to families because of it. Mm. 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 Yeah. In addition to that, I think whenever we have the holy thing, we need all of our faculties on the table. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes. Part of part of Wesley's uh, thing against particularly corn liquors was because it was uh, used to take away food from the, that could be given to the poor. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So a personal story for me. I am I grew up in a very teetotaling family, and I am not a teetotaler, uh, much to my mother's chagrin. Uh, but I think of those verses in Proverbs. You know, give beer to people who are to forget their misery. And the one time that I, on purpose, drank too much was to help me get through the first night I was going to be sleeping in my bed without any. Um, you know, and it's, I didn't think of that verse, but I did it. <laughs> it was more of a, I don't know how I'm going to do this, you know. Um, Self-treatment. Yeah. And I've never, like I said, it's the only time. But it's also, you know, I, I was... I did it knowing what I was doing and knowing I was in a safe place, but also not knowing how. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I don't, I personally don't think, I could be wrong, but I don't think I was sitting in that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I see lots of friends who drink ridiculous amounts of alcohol, and I, I don't understand yeah. that. But I think in that one moment, for me, Medication. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Consistency, John, that, that make it hard for all of us. You know, when you know, with Christ's first miracle of turning the water to wine, if it's if there's such a fear of it, why was that the thing that was 
you know, give it to everyone. And then uh, with uh, communion, you know, why does he use wine? Yes. You know, if it's bad for us, how would any portion be good for us? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm not trying to... No. Okay, what is this? This is so it is. And, and this is where, uh, on, on so many issues, we've, we've mentioned several, the Bible continually calls us to be thoughtful and committed and to want Christ before anything else. And, and whenever I have to have anything else, I'm in trouble. Whether it's money, whether it's alcohol, whether it's chocolate, <laughs> but when whenever we have to have anything, <laughs> is it I, Lord? Yes. Uh, uh, anything that stands in the way of Him is wrong. It's 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 as simple as that. And and I love what um, C.S. Lewis has screw tapes say. In screw tape letters. We have never yet been able to create anything that is positively evil. All we can do is take something the enemy has made good and twist it. Charlie? That long. What matters to them is Am I loving to my wife? Do I cheat on my taxes? Mm -hmm. What kind of a yeah. person am I? Yes. And whether or not uh, I have one with dinner or the uh, bourbon or whatever it might be, they don't really care. That's not an indication of character. Mm -hmm. What yeah. matters to them is the things that I have said. And frankly, we as evangelicals, we, we pick our sins, don't we? Mm -hmm. When was the last time we ever heard a series of a sermon on don't have that third piece of pie at the top church pot? <laughs> gluttony. Gluttony. Yep. But that's the fit you have a box, and I grew up with people that love the fact that it's not at all. I think frankly some of it makes a big deal. That's not what not what the control doesn't care. What matters to them is what kind of people are. Love each other. That's mm -hmm. that's the essence. Yeah. Yeah. That, that goes down to the excess of it, though. Like, right. you are the excess of it is the thing that changes your character. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. From Argentina, uh, one of these great evangelical singing groups that toured America wrote a song about a little truck farmer in southern Argentina and uh, Salial, and he was uh, he was an alcoholic. And in the song, they sing how Jesus turned water into wine. Mm -hmm. And in Selial's life, God turned wine into shoes and clothes for his children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I, I want to I wanna hammer it again. The issue is Jesus. And whatever it is that will please him, that will deliver me from bondage to anything else. That's the issue. James. We we are servants of Christ. So you've got the judges and the priests in the Old Testament that are unable to to do their service to their people. Mm -hmm. They don't love their people enough. They, they drink too much. And they do, and the same with Matthew 24. I mean, you've got the steward who is supposed to give his food to the people, but he eats and drinks with drunkenness. And so it's not wrong because then in Luke 22, Jesus says, you will eat and drink with me at my table in the kingdom. So it's not just the point. But only lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> For our fruitfulness, if we don't love uh, our, our ministry enough to uh, try to avoid ways to derail it, then we will succumb to the temptations of the devil. In in a whole variety of ways, and and as Charlie has said, it's often said the one acceptable evangelical sin is gluttony. And. How about pride? 
that too. Okay, let's move on. Uh, Kevin. Great. Yeah, yeah. Very, very significant point. Okay, let's move on to another topic. What was so wrong about Ham seeing his father naked? <laughs> okay, he went out and told his brothers. <laughs> no, we got to go beyond you. <laughs> all right, all right. The the virility is sacred, and and this is this is a very significant point. And 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 Patty has touched on something that's very important. Right through the Old Testament, the question of fertility and virility is, is right at the heart of virtually everything. And it's no accident that the sign of the covenant is circumcision. Because this was a terribly hot issue in the ancient world. I mean, we've got a problem with overpopulation. They had a problem with underpopulation. People died. Babies died at a tremendous rate. And so the issue is, how are we going to have enough children here to go on? And so this is a very significant issue. Okay? What else? Rather than seeing him as a needy soul created in the image of God. Mm-hmm. 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 M
His father has failed. I think we're clear on that. Drunkenness is not acceptable in the Bible. <laughs> Bingo. His father has failed, and so Ham is glorying in his father's failure. And pretty clearly laughing at it. Yes, please. I find myself wondering, you know, that was just been through a lot. Oh, yes. Yes. Leadership position that came yes. out a lot of yes. Yes. So mm-hmm. heavy decision making. Yep. And um makes me wonder what went on in the ark between Noah and Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone hear that? She wonders what went on in the ark between Noah and Ham. Get up and feed the elephants. (laughs) Nah, (laughs) I'm tired. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Exactly. Yes. 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 Uh, you're you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. This is this is where the problem is. Now I, I want to push this a little farther. Why is it important that we honor our parents? Why is it important for us that we honor our parents? Well, the promise God gives a long life. Mm-hmm. They gave us life in the first place. In your book, there's something to be said about um, young adults, age of 21, 22, you're in perfect physical shape. Um, your parents have made all the decisions and guiding your family up to this point. You're starting to challenge the authority there without really knowing what you're talking about. Yet. <laughs> I'd say that starts a little earlier than young adults. <laughs> exactly. I am the center of my world. And you old people... You're just vehicles for my getting here. So that once again, the whole question of the centrality of I. As soon as I say, I owe my existence to you, something changes. And let's let's push it forward, farther. Not just realizing our dependence on them, honoring them? Suppose they're not worthy of honor. Suppose they've been really bad parents, as is tragically common these days. Honor them? What's that about? Okay, okay, exactly. What are you willing to give, Paul? <laughs> yes, yes, th- there it is that I willingly give something to this person who is over me, and that does something to me, so that all the way through here, it's the recognition I'm not in charge. I'm not the center of the universe. 
I owe my life, my being, to someone else who gave it to me. Gave it to me for a mother at the risk of her life. And it's in that sense that this silly little incident is not at all silly. It's the whole question of who am I and what is my place in the world? And uh, Ham has lost that. There's a couple of different places. <clears throat> One is for the office or for the role. Mm -hmm. And then there's the personal earnings mm -hmm. aspect. Mm -hmm. And so you have those, those kinds exactly. of examples that even if a person hasn't earned your respect, uh, the position at exactly is status is given, and that that is uh, its own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are worth respecting because of the position in which they are. Mm -hmm. but, but who are believers? Doesn't it always come back to this thing of character? If we want our character to be transformed to that of Christ, are we willing to submit? Mm -hmm. What doesn't feel good. <laughs> exactly. Truly forgive and be forgiven. Yes. 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 Yes, I as as we talked a little bit last time, I've I've thought a bit about Noah in this situation. Uh, the letdown <laughs> after it's all over. But also the grief. Everybody he ever knew is dead. Uh, so I think we can see a lot of reasons why Noah succumbed in that way. But his succumbing became an opportunity for Ham's failure. And, and there it is again. As, as we think about the two sides of this honoring thing, uh, are we the kinds of persons that our children can honor? Charlie? First, you mentioned, uh, Noah mentions It's it's ten forty two. That's the next question, and it's a big one. Think think about this. Look at look at the uh, text and uh, and what it does, and and this has been a hot issue for about 2,600 years, <laughs> but an important one. Please. I've never gotten over a, uh, I don't really remember where I saw this, but uh, in the Middle Ages, the old father was living with the family and he was shaky and uh, he tended to drop the dishes and break them. And so the uh, son of that man, grown man, made a wooden trencher 
for him. And one day the, so that's the grandfather. One day the father saw his son and his son was carving. And he said, what are you carving, son? I'm carving a plate for you when you're old. So you're absolutely right. The, the honoring of the parents becomes a much bigger thing when they get old like us. <laughs> Not you, me. Uh, uh, but there it is. There it is. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for the truth of your word. Hidden in apparently simple little events, but deep with truth. Help us, Lord, each one of us, in the situation where we find ourselves, to honor our parents and to be persons who are worthy of honor. And in it all, Lord, teach us the glorious truth that you are Lord and we can gladly lay down our rights, our positions, our honors for you. Thank you. In your name, amen. All right. Onward and forward.